What's up guys, it's Kayla and welcome to a brand new visual novel series by the same company, Voltage. It's Be My Princess. So basically, it's just a storyline of us somehow running into a bunch of princes and picking one that we end up following out a story with to become a princess. So if you're ready, let's get started. Oh, so here's the actual storyline. You're a normal college kid until the day you meet a prince. He invites you to a party with the princes of the six kingdoms. The fate of their countries rests on these future king's shoulders. Where will your romance lead the both of you? Prologue. Oh, it's very nice artwork. I like it. Won't you accompany me on a date? I still didn't know the identity of the man in front of me. Nor did I realize that this meeting would change my life forever. My goodness, everything is so beautiful. I was out enjoying my first day off since arriving here in Charles' kingdom as an exchange student. This country, with a history spanning 80 generations, values its people's autonomy over old traditions and has a glamorous streak. The sense of glamour seemed to tend to the picture-perfect streets of the city, as well as the people filling its streets. I always dreamed of seeing it for myself, and now I'm here. Seeing it in person really is different than looking at photos. It was then that I saw an old man in the streets, doubled over. Are you okay? I called out to him as I hurled to his side and this old man looked up at me with a troubled expression, and my eyes were met with an elegant face and fine clothing. Oh, I suddenly feel a tad unwell is all. The man let out a painful sigh. Ugh. I wonder if he's from around here. I saw a park just over there. How would you like to sit with me on one of those benches? I rubbed his back gently as I invited him. That's all right. Somebody should be coming for me soon enough. The old man's words trailed off as his eyes rested on the necklace I was wearing. Miss, that necklace! What, this? I touched the necklace that lay against my skin. It's one of my personal treasures, from my mother. Um, is there something? No, no, it's nothing. Please excuse me. I can get distracted from time to time. That's alright. A luxury car then drove up to us, and a man climbed out. He seemed in a hurry. Master, has something happened? I addressed the now kneeling man from the car whose face turned pale. He seemed to be feeling unwell. The man looked even more troubled by my words, and he put his hand to the older man's shoulder. Are you alright, sir? Yes, much better thanks to this young lady. Thank you. The old man leaned on the younger man's hand as he straightened up and smiled at me. No, please. Anyway, I should get going. I gave a little bow and turned to leave. But the old man called out to me to stop. Please, one moment. I turned back and the old man was whispering something to the other man. What is your name, young lady? My name? I'd like to know the name of a person who has treated me with such kindness, wouldn't you? The old man flashed me a bright smile. Then he handed me a piece of paper that had been handed to him by the man by his side. If you ever need any help, Please allow me to return the favor. All you need to do is contact me at this number. There was a telephone number written on the paper, which I had accepted without thinking. Um, I... Before I could form a thought, the old man spoke again. Your name, miss? Startled by the slightly forceful tone, I replied in a rush. Um, my name is Kayla Michelle. So, what am I going to do with this? I was strolling aimlessly as I looked down at the paper I had just received. All I did was rub his back a little. What am I supposed to do with this phone number? Well, for now, in my pocket it goes. At that moment, I felt something strike me on the top of the head. Huh? I looked up to see that the sky, which was so bright just a moment ago, was now covered by dark rain clouds. Raindrops were falling, the rain growing heavier and heavier, so I ran for cover under the awning of the closest shop. As fate would have it, the store I dashed into was a flower shop, full of a variety of fragrances. Suddenly, overcome by all the beautiful flowers, I let out a whisper without thinking. They're so beautiful. And then the soft voice of a man reached my ears. Beautiful flowers for a beautiful young lady. Who? I turned around to see someone holding out an umbrella to me. I'm sorry, that was a bit forward of me. Did I frighten you? The holder of the umbrella was a young man with a gentle smile. This man, I feel like I've seen him somewhere before, and those clothes. I cocked my head at the side as I eyed his somewhat fancy clothing. He smiled brightly. Aren't you getting wet standing there? The gentle smile appeared on his lips as he held the umbrella out to me. 
This guy reminds me of Charles Prince Edward. <laughs> what a coincidence. But there is no way a prince would be wandering about a place like this. That's okay, I'm fine under this awning. I think that you're the only one getting wet. I'm alright. You know, if you listen hard enough, it almost seems like you can hear whispers from the beautiful flowers like these. Hearing that, I came to the shop and here, this beautiful flower. His hand reached, gently brushed my cheek. Beautiful flower? That smile seemed to suck me in and suddenly I felt my heart pounding. And then, over the man's shoulder, I noticed that a great many black cars were speeding by. Wow! I couldn't help staring at the expensive cars as they flew by, one after another. One of those cars splashed up mud as it passed. Yikes! He's going to get covered in mud! As I thought the words, I dashed forward to try and protect the man from the splash. And then, with a splash, my clothes were covered with muddy water. Ah! Um... As soon as he noticed what had happened, the man propelled me toward the flower shop and looked me over in concern. Are you alright? I... yes. That was what I said, but I clearly was not alright. Then the car that had splattered me with mud stopped a little way ahead, and a man stepped out of it. Please forgive me, were you struck, miss? As he spoke, his eyes fell on the man beside me. Oh, oh, do they know each other? Were you on your way to the party, sir? Yes. Just then, a new voice snapped into the conversation. What are you doing? What? I turned in the direction of that voice. Then I saw another man step out of the car in rather dressy clothes, just like the man beside me. Oh, I have seen him somewhere as well. Forgive me, sir. This young lady here was struck with mud due to my reckless driving and... Mud? He stared at me boldly. Then he seemed to notice the man beside me and started. Sorry, but I'm in a hurry, Luke. You take care of this. After he spoke, he turned his back to us and hurried back to his car. What was that? He didn't even apologize? Er, please accept our apologies, miss. You must allow us to pay to replace your damaged clothes. You need only send us the bill after you buy something to replace your outfit. He held out a card as he spoke. Come on, let's go. At once, sir. Then I watched as they went back to their car. I heard a snickering laugh from behind me. Oh, he just never changes. I saw the man smiling when I turned to look at him. First, you take this. As he spoke, he smoothly held out a handkerchief. Oh. I hesitated slightly before I accepted the kind gesture. Thank you. I lightly patted at the mud with the handkerchief, and he spoke in a kind voice. I am sorry, though. Your lovely outfit was ruined just for me. No, it's not. It wasn't your fault. Please don't worry about it. The man seemed startled by my smile, and he stared openly at my face. What? What now? That serious expression set my heart racing all at once. Then he dropped to one knee before me and took my hand in his. Huh? And the words that came next from his mouth. Won't you accompany me on a date? I can't believe that I'm actually here. That was the only thought in my head as I stand before the castle of Noble Mikkel. It was the largest castle in the world best known for being a site where only members of the royal families of the six great kingdoms could be married. It was the holy land for any girl in the world who had ever dreamed of becoming a princess. But what was I doing in this place that any woman would dream to come to? The truth was that I had been brought thanks to the man's sudden invitation. A date? I stood fixed in the spot in shock and another gentle smile appeared on his face. To ruin a woman's clothing is... A serious sin as to pluck a beautiful rose from its branch. A beautiful rose? What does that have to do with anything? Okay. Then the man drew my hand to him and kissed the back of it. I don't know if this can serve as an appropriate apology, but won't you do me the honor of going with me to tonight's party? Party? Oh, that's all he meant by a date. Then the man continued with a serious expression. Luis, if you could make the necessary preparations. At once, sir. I hurriedly open my mouth to speak when I hear that exchange, but I can't possibly go to a party. I just came to Charles as an exchange student. I didn't bring anything dressy to wear or... Then the man smiled gently again. That is nothing to worry about. We will take care of everything. As he spoke, he clapped his hands and several men and women appeared at the signal. What? What the? Unbothered by my shock, he gave out orders to the people who had appeared around us. A dress for the lady, please, and hair and makeup too. Oh, and have these clothes cleaned and have replacements prepared as well. 
but I never thought I would be brought someplace like this. I had just stepped into the castle of Noble Macau. I lifted the hem of the borrowed dress and stepped forward timidly. He told me that he would see me inside, but I never had the time to ask him his name. I was about to step into the ballroom when I was nearly knocked over by someone stepping out of the room. Oh, excuse me. I looked up and saw a regal face looking down at me. No, I am the one who must apologize. I lowered my head respectfully and he smiled slightly. I haven't seen you at these parties before. Oh, he's actually really good looking, though he's dressed like that man. I wonder if it is the formal dress from some foreign country. It is a pleasure, sir. My name is Kayla Michelle. A pleasure. Those curt words left me feeling nervous again for a moment. Is this perhaps your first time here? I nodded when he asked. Yes, it is. But how could he tell that it was? As I stared curiously at him, he smiled for a brief instant. Well, then I heard another voice coming from behind us. Well, isn't this a surprise, finding you actually talking with a woman? I turned when I heard those words, and another man was standing there with a bright smile. Won't you introduce me? I'm hardly in a position to be giving introductions. Excuse me. That was all he said before he stepped back into the ballroom. No surprises to find that he's as cold as ever, but are you going in? I hurriedly stepped to the side. Excuse me, I didn't mean to stand in your way. Then the man easily took my hand in his. You needn't worry about anything like that, my dear. My dear? Me? Meeting you here like this must be some sort of fate. Won't you allow me to escort you into the party? He peered into my face as he spoke, his tone slightly teasing. Is it a bit embarrassing to walk in by myself? Maybe I should let him escort me. I would be honored, sir, thank you. And then I stepped into a world unlike any I had ever known before. I knew I wouldn't fit in here. Maybe I should just go home. As I thought the words, I reached out for a glance of champagne off of a nearby table. At the same moment, a man standing nearby also reached for a glass and our hands met. Sorry. Oh no, please excuse me. The man hardly seemed to notice me. As he lifted the glass from the table and drained it dry, then he took several more glasses and drained them as well. Whoa, that's quite impressive. Perhaps he noticed me staring, but the man did finally acknowledge my existence. What? Have you never seen anyone drink before? Er, no, I... Now that I look at him, I saw that he was wearing the same sort of outfit as the men I'd met before. Well, isn't this funny? Maybe they're all princes. Hmm. And I feel like I've seen him on TV or something as well. <laughs> this is killing me. Then another man's voice interrupted us. What nice manners, instead of saying hello. You're here with the alcohol and the women. The new man, with just a hint of innocence about his cherubic face, was also wearing the same sort of outfit. I'm sure of it now. It must be some sort of local dress for the formal occasions. When he heard these words, the man drinking champagne spoke in a disgruntled tone. What do you mean by that? Nothing in particular. The new man smiled and the other sighed as he muttered. I don't know how you put up with being put on parade like this. We don't have a choice, do we? It's a part of our civil duty and all that. So come, let's be going. The drinker nodded reluctantly at those words. I know. Goodbye. He glanced at me for a moment before he fell in with the other man. And then they were gone. And him too. I feel sure I've seen him somewhere. Is it all in my head? Just as the thought crossed my mind, a voice filled the room. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Please turn your eyes now to the balcony atop the spiral staircase. What? I looked about the excited crowd and everyone was staring up at the balcony. My eyes were also drawn up the stairs. The eyes of the world are all upon them. The future kings of the six greatest kingdoms on earth. What? And then the spotlight snapped on, illuminating the pictures of six men. The future kings? Those guys are... I stared wide-eyed at the men's faces. First is Charles' own Prince Edward. At those words, one of the men started down the spiral staircase. What? I thought he just looked like him, but he really is the crown prince. A real prince? I can't believe I... He stepped down off the stairs, and another pair of footsteps could be heard coming down that staircase. Prince Wilfred of Philip. Oh, isn't that the man that I almost ran into outside? I thought he seemed quite cool and good looking, but he is the Prince of Philip? As my eyes followed him, the next prince was also introduced. Prince Keith of Liberty. 
I felt slightly suffocated as I saw Prince Keith coming down the stairs. He's also one of them? Oh, no wonder he seemed to know Prince Edward. But I never would have taken him for a prince. Then another familiar face entered my line of sight. Prince Roberto of Altaria. Oh, that's the man who escorted me into the ballroom tonight. Which means I was escorted in by a future king. As I stood in shock, another man was being introduced to the audience. Prince Joshua of Dres Van. Very smartly put together man looked down upon the crowd. Huh? Isn't that the man who just drained all those champagne glasses? He had a slightly frightening air about him, but even he was a prince. I couldn't hide my complete shock, even as the spotlight fell on the last prince. And Prince Glynn of Orleans. He's a prince too? He looks a fair bit younger than the other princes though. Maybe even younger than me? At last, all six men had made their way down the staircase, and a great storm of applause naturally filled the room. How could it be that six men I met today all turned out to be princes? Things like that just don't happen, right? Well, they do in visual novels. After that, I had come time for their seating line, but I was unable to approach the princes. Though I do want to go and thank Prince Edward at least, despite that wish, the space in front of the princes was filled by an army of women. There was no clear way to get in front of them. Just then, someone shoved past me and sent me knocking into another stranger. Watch it! Oh! Flung forward, I tumbled to the ground, my hands breaking my fall. Silence fell around me for a moment. Ah! Uh, how embarrassing! I hurriedly tried to stand, and then... Are you alright? A hand appeared before me, together with that voice. Oh, this voice is... I looked up, and there was Prince Edward smiling at me. Thank you. I borrowed his hand and pulled myself up as the prince gently smiled. So, you are a prince? Please forgive me for all the thoughtless things I said. His eyes glimmered when he heard my words. No, I am at fault for bringing you someplace like this. Without even giving you my name. I am the one who should be apologizing. Prince Edward looked at me as he spoke. I wasn't sure how such a last minute outfit would look, but you look divine. My face flushed red when I heard those words. That's not, oh, but I do thank you for lending me this beautiful dress. I smiled back at him, and he squeezed my hand, still held in his. A dress exists only to be worn by a woman. I am sure that this dress is glad that it could adorn someone as beautiful as you. I, but if you aren't careful, you may just find yourself the target of jealousy with beauty such as yours. I am sure the lovely flowers decorating this ballroom all wish they were quite as captivating as the bloom in your cheeks. It's really quite embarrassing, but still, a voice spoke up from behind us. I never would have expected you to know the lady, Prince Edward. When I looked, I saw that it was Prince Roberto, who had escorted me into the ballroom. Thanks for joining me before. I bowed my head when he spoke to me. No, thank you, sir, for escorting me. What's this? You know Prince Roberto? I wouldn't say that, I know him. We only just met at the entrance. That's right, you must know her better than I, don't you, Prince Edward? Prince Edward smiled softly. I'm afraid that I only just met her today myself. But it is really thanks to Prince Keith that I could invite her here this evening. Prince Keith, who had been standing nearby, cut into the conversation. Thanks to me? Yes, that's right. Don't you remember the woman? whose clothes were ruined by your car kicking up mud this afternoon. Prince Keith cocked his head to the side, then looked at my face. Oh, you're the one from the street, but why are you here? Prince Edward kindly invited me here to apologize for the damage to my clothes. He invited you? Hmm. Well, he did always like to dabble with commoners. He glanced at me as he spoke, and then he walked away. Ugh, he's kind of a jerk. I grimaced, and then I felt piercing eyes on me. When I looked, Prince Wilfred was examining my face. Oh. He chuckled as he walked away. Oh, great. Now a prince caught me making a strange face. At that, Prince Roberto began speaking with a smile. Prince Keith seemed quite worked up. I wonder if he was trying to catch your eye. What? Oh, prince Roberto, you know that Prince Keith would be angry if he heard you say something like that. Prince Roberto shrugged and laughed. That is fun in its own way, too. But I'd rather just talk to you more. How about it? Prince Roberto cracked a smile and my heart skipped a beat. Then a low voice suddenly interrupted us. Forgive me, but tonight's party is meant for the princes to mingle. 
Don't you think you ought to refrain from such private matters? I turned and Prince Joshua was standing there. For a moment, his eyes lingered on me, but then his gaze returned to the other princes, as if I was of no special note. I see. Well, there are so many people here. It's no wonder that he doesn't remember meeting you before. I guess I must apologize for disrupting the evening, but I was the one who invited the ladies, so could you at least excuse me? Prince Edward bowed his head politely, then Prince Joshua turned his back on him and sighed quietly. If you're going to go that far, then I don't particularly care what you do. I'd like you to avoid causing any more disruptions. When he was done speaking, he headed back to the center of the dance floor, and I heard someone clucking at us nearby. What a bore. I looked around, and there was Prince Glynn, who had so recently been the last introduced. Seeing him up close only confirmed my earlier impression that he was younger than I was. Oh, excuse me. I've just always thought that such gatherings as this are quite tedious. But I should not be airing such private feelings in public, if you'll excuse me. Prince Glenn tossed the words behind him as he left. As we watched him go, Prince Edward laughed softly. <laughs> he never changes, good little Prince Glenn. But it's okay if he's a bit prickly, it's quite cute on him. Cute? Him? As I harbored my own doubts in my mind, Prince Edward and Prince Roberto's butlers called out to them. Oh, I suppose we must be going. Enjoy yourself, alright? I'll see you later. Yes, thank you very much. Music slowly swelled and filled the room again from nowhere. In response to the music, couples started to form throughout the ballroom. Is there going to be dancing? It seemed as if there was a chance to dance with the princes as well. Judging by their great hordes of women that were surrounding them once again. Amazing, but well, it has nothing to do with me. Maybe I should go hit up the food tables while everyone's dancing. I began walking towards the tables where the food was laid out. Might I have this dance? Huh? I turned, and standing there before me was... Dot, dot, dot. Choose a story. Okay, so we got Wilfred, Keith, Roberto, Edward, Joshua, and Glenn. And then there's two butlers, Zane and Yaakov. Well, I don't know if Yaakov is a butler, but Zane's definitely a butler. And if you click on their picture, I think it gives, yes, it gives a little something about them. It says who the butler is even lets you know their blood type and their birthday. So to be honest, I think it's between Prince Edward and Prince Wilfred. So I'm gonna go ahead and read both of their things and then you guys can comment below who you want me to read the story of when I finish Metro PD. And I will get right on that, whoever gets the most votes. We're gonna keep it between Prince Wilfred or Prince Edward. So Prince Wilfred, I don't want you to be constrained by the royal family. He's crown prince of the Philip Kingdom, age 25, blood type A, birthday April 5th, oh, my birthday's in April too, height 5'10", and his butler Claude says rules of the royal household. My name is Claude, butler to the Spencer family. Master Wilfred does not appreciate his things being touched by others. Keep an appropriate distance. Enter his room? That is simply out of the question. Who interesting. And then we have Prince Edward. He is Edward Levain Cois, Crown Prince of Charles Kingdom, age 23, blood type O, birthday May 15th, height 6 feet. A person as beautiful as you must be beautiful on the inside as well. And his butler, Luis, says, rules of the royal household. My name is Luis, and I serve as butler to the Levain Cois family. Rules, well is forbidden to harm Prince Edward's person or otherwise impact him negatively. If anyone hurts our prince, even you, miss, they will not be forgiven. Interesting. Well, let me know in the comments who you guys would prefer. It's between Wilfred and Edward, so let me know. Thanks for watching.